Imran Khan led Pakistan's cricket team to World Cup glory in 1992. But in the 30 years since, he's gone on to become a philanthropist, setting up a cancer hospital in Lahore, and a political activist, establishing his own party, the PTI, or Movement for Justice. He became Pakistan's 22nd Prime Minister in 2018, pledging to fight corruption and revive the country's struggling economy. He's ushered in a new foreign policy too, moving away from the US and closer to Russia and China. But Pakistan's tense relationship with India did not improve on his watch. His tenure came to a dramatic end in April this year after he was overthrown in a no-confidence vote. He's accused the United States of a conspiracy to remove him from power, a claim the US State Department denies. Khan has taken to the streets to demand another election and, as we heard from Avani earlier, continues to lead rallies of his supporters. I spoke with Imran Khan from Islamabad. Imran Khan, welcome to the program. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Mark. Right now, Pakistan is in the midst of an economic crisis. There's huge increases in the cost of living, there's inflation, power costs, uh, currency problems. That's a lot of change, a lot of disruption. Do you think the current government is equipped to handle this crisis? Well, you know, Mark, uh, knowing the, the aftermath of, uh, of the coronavirus, it disrupted all suppliers and there was this commodity super cycle, prices went up, inflation went up all over the world. So my government had very delicately balanced all this. And uh, we, we had just, uh, we managed to keep the prices down and, uh, and the sentiment was good because our industrial growth and our agricultural growth was going very well. So when this uh, regime change took place, the, uh, the market lost confidence. So what we are watching right now is, uh, uh, is a meltdown. Our currency uh, has lost uh, almost 10% of its value. Uh, stock exchange has crashed. Uh, prices have gone through the roof. Inflation is now uh, about 30%. Uh, so um, the country is uh, facing challenges right now. You've led several protests over the past few weeks. What exactly are you trying to achieve? Are you not concerned that the protests will add to a sense of chaos? Well, the chaos was when uh, Mark, this, uh, what we call the US-backed regime change took place in Pakistan. Uh, and, uh, and, and so the, my government was replaced by a government... 60% of the cabinet is on bail. Uh, these uh, two families have been ruling Pakistan for 30 years. So I, my government was the first time we replaced this two-party system and we came into power. Now, the parties that were fighting, uh, contesting against each other, both have joined hands and are in government. But they're facing massive corruption cases. And so what has happened is that these people have come into power. Rather than having a roadmap to fix the economy, all they're doing is trying to get rid of the corruption cases of billions of rupees. So they are completely incapable of handling it. All we want is we just want elections. We want free and fair elections so that let the people of Pakistan decide who should run the country rather than a U.S.-backed regime change. You have repeatedly claimed the US backed your removal from office. What evidence do you have of that? Well, yes. Uh, on 7th of March, the, the US uh, Under Secretary of State, Donald Liu, he meets our ambassador in Washington and actually threatens him that unless I, Imran Khan, is removed uh, uh, through a vote of no confidence, uh, there'll be consequences for Pakistan. And if I'm removed, then all will be forgiven. Now, this is uh, this American official um, t uh, threatening our ambassador. An ambassador in an official meeting, minutes were taken. He sends this cipher, which I see, this uh, coded message, which I see. And then suddenly, uh, um, our, our allies and uh, 20 of our uh, members of my party start... Uh, uh, a jump ship. So all we want is an inquiry into this because we feel there is blatant evidence of uh, regime change. The State Department have denied they push for regime change. If what you're saying is true, why would they have denied it? Well, I think it'll be extremely embarrassing 
the State Department clearly, or this, uh, this Under Secretary Donald Liu, clearly did not think this would become public. Elections are scheduled for next year. If you are so confident of your re-election, why not just wait for those elections? Mark, this is insulting for a country of 220 million people that a, 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 an elected prime minister is removed by, uh, by this uh, conspiracy. And we know, we know what the conspiracy was. Let me just say, this is not, Pakistan is not the first country that where the regime change by the US has taken place. No Pakistani Prime Minister has ever finished a term in office. And I'm curious as to why that is and why the role of the military is so significant. In the last 62 years, half the time we have been ruled by military and half the time by these two families. Uh, you know, he, they've ruled us. So this is, I'm the, uh, you know, first time it's a, uh, a new party has come up. And I feel that uh, days of military uh, ruling Pakistan are over. I think this, uh, there's a, as I say, that there's a consensus in the country that even a poor democratic government uh, is better than a military government because what happens is that when the military intervention takes place, we go back to square one. We then again have to start our e e evolution as a democracy. At the moment, do you have any indication from foreign governments that they would support you returning uh, to power? You know, Mark, I don't want any support from foreign governments to get into power. I want free and fair elections. Let the people of Pakistan decide whoever they think is best to, 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 uh, rule, uh, to uh, govern the country. Just looking now at the India-Pakistan relationship, a couple of weeks ago we had the Indian High Commissioner to Australia, Manpreet Vora, on the show. And he said that Pakistan sponsored terrorism, and that they won't deal with Pakistan until Pakistan deals with that. I'm curious, do you have a response to that position? Well, you know, this is, this is a standard line by India, because you see, wh where is the terror? There is only one issue between us, and that is Kashmir. And I find that uh, it's just lack of leadership that we have not been able to resolve this issue. Because the advantages of peace in the subcontinent are enormous. Uh, Pakistan on one side has China, one of the biggest, fastest growing economy in the world. And then we have India on the other side, which is potentially one of the uh, second biggest market in the world and uh, economy in the world. And then on our other side, we have all the uh, world energy reserves. We have Iran and then we have uh, Central Asia. So we are strategically placed. If we had peace with India, India then has access to all the energy corridors. It has access to Central Asia, land access. And on the other hand, Pakistan has, and India, we have access to each other's markets. So the, 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 the dividends of peace are enormous. But unfortunately, the, it is all stuck in Kashmir. We have not been able to resolve this issue in 75 years. And in my opinion, it just takes determined leadership uh, if, if two can um, decide to sit down and resolve the issue. Then the, this whole area will be transformed. Uh, and, and may I say that, you know, uh, the issue of resolving Kashmir lies with the people of Kashmir. There's lots of Pakistani Australians watching tonight. Do you have a message for the diaspora? The biggest support actually since uh, this regime change in Pakistan took place. Uh, it's never happened before that uh, all the Pakistanis, when we have what, almost, um, almost 9 million Pakistanis uh, diaspora living in different countries, and never has it happened that they turned out in such large numbers uh, to support us, to support me. It's never happened because normally when a, there's a regime change, uh, there's celebration in Pakistan. People distribute sweets. This is the only time that people came out and millions of people within the country and Pakistan, uh, Pakistanis outside came out to protest. And so uh, I consider just uh, uh, my, finally that I consider the overseas Pakistanis Pakistanis living in Australia, they are one of our greatest assets. Just lastly, before I let you go, you have had an incredible life. What would you most like to be remembered for? Look, 
Uh, you know, Mark, I've also been very privileged. I've had more love and respect uh, in my country than any, hardly any other Pakistani. So my contribution to my society would be just that I would, uh, which I started my politics 26 years ago. And I, I have to say I was inspired by when I first went to England as a teenager, the two things that inspired me about England, rule of law and a welfare state. And uh, later on, when I studied my own history, uh, the first welfare state in, in the history of uh, uh, mankind was made by our prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the first state of Medina. This is exactly what he did. And this is, these are exactly the principles which I set out 26 years ago. This is what I want in Pakistan. My biggest struggle right has been that the ruling elite, these two families that have ruled Pakistan for 30 years, they refuse to come under the rule of law. The prosperous states always have rule of law. And that is the reason why you liberate the potential of a society. So the big difference is rule of law. And that's really my mission. Imran Khan, thank you so much for joining us on India Now. Pleasure, Mark.